Well, Mark and I are going to discuss uh, photographs of ours uh, relative to these two concepts that we've covered already, the frame and the vantage point. With vantage point, uh, we've got to ask ourselves some questions and think about what this concept is and come up with some answers. First question, what's normal? And uh, normal is a very important question for you to ask as a photographer because as we've seen already, that idea of what is a normal vantage point, for me it happens to be about this high, which is a little bit less than six feet. That normal vantage point is the one that you don't even think about, that you understand the world from, you look around, everything seems normal. What's the wrong vantage point for the subject that you're photographing, uh, along with what's the normal vantage point for that subject that you're photographing? Thinking about the wrong vantage point is a very important question to ask yourself. Should you get too close to the person? Should you get too far away? Is it okay to be really close to a rock or far away from that rock? I mean, the rock is not going to have any feelings, but the person will. Your adjustment of your vantage point to make yourself feel uncomfortable, actually, is a real key element in trying to find new ways to address old subjects. Finally, thinking about photography as a photocentric uh, activity and thinking about the vantage point as having a lot to do with photography in ways that it doesn't have a lot to do, frankly, with other media. If you see a photograph displayed in a museum or a gallery, you'll probably usually think at some point about where the photographer or at least where the camera was if you're delving into the content of the picture and if you shift over to the next image that's on the walls of the museum and it maybe it happens to be a painting probably not going to be thinking too terribly hard about where the painter was at the moments that they made that painting it's just really not as much of an issue as it is for us as photographers where that camera is and its relationship to content has so much to do with the importance of these decisions. Questions for us related to the frame, well, these are important ones also. Uh, what's in the frame? In other words, what's in your picture? And what is referenced outside the frame? You reference things that are outside the frame very often by what you show in the frame. Just as an example, if I'm the subject, you're the photographer, and I'm posed this way, looking off in the distance, the viewer might wonder, hey, what is, what's Peter looking at? What's, that, what's going on out there? There's other ways that you can reference what's outside of the frame as well. There might be a pattern of elements behind me that you know extends beyond the frame. What are the relationships that arise when you put two facts together? Or three, or four, or eight, or ten? One of the essential things that we do as a photographer is enclose. That's what this frame is all about. And when we enclose facts, things, people, places, whatever, that are not normally seen together, we can create new relationships and new content. Another thing about the frame, what happens when something gets chopped abruptly? It's cut off. Part of it is shown. Part of it isn't shown there's an increased awareness of the viewer that there is an edge. And this can be quite unnerving when things are chopped in ways that are unpleasant or raise questions about why that chopping was done. What's missing? What's outside of the frame? What's inside? Why is this important? Finally, think about negative space. Now, negative space is the space that surrounds the nominal subject of your picture. For example, if it's a person, very often they're seen as the positive space and what's behind them is negative space. And there are times in photography when that frame can affect the negative space in such a way that it becomes content as well. In other words, positive. So I wanted to make some pictures that would explore these ideas of frame and the vantage point. And uh, I went where many people go on campus, and that is to go visit Sparty. Sparty is, of course, the, one of the symbols for our university. Uh, it's the largest freestanding ceramic sculpture in the world, made by one of my colleagues in the art department many years ago. And uh, many people go and photograph Sparty over in the football building, where he's now sitting. His copy is out in the, in the public for other people to see. 
but the original Sparty's inside the football building, and uh, that's kind of what he looks like from a normal vantage point. I zoomed in next uh, to frame Sparty a little bit more narrowly to see if he was smiling at me or if he was telling a joke or what he was up to. Um, and I noticed that there was a shadow uh, on the left side that was starting to creep out as the sun set. I made, again, a very symmetrical composition like the first one. Uh, there's a centered object with about the same information on left and right. So I decided to change my vantage point that's one of the things we photographers do, as you know. We're running around, looking at things from different angles, trying to get something other than what's normal. And here I found an asymmetrical composition, and I was able to combine Sparty, this traditional old sculpture, with a very contemporary architectural motif. A really great photographer named Jay Mizell once gave me some advice. And that advice was, whenever you think you're really into something that you're looking straight ahead at, uh, go and look at it from the other side. And so I did. I always follow good advice, and I'll pass that along from Jay Mizell to you. And when I moved to the other side of the room and looked at Sparty from the other direction, now I'm looking more into the sunlight rather than seeing that sunlight reflected on the wall, and there's new relationships that occurred. So now that I'd circled around Sparty, I went back to square one. This time there was more separation between Sparty and his shadow, and I kind of liked that, and I said, well, let's try to work on that. So I moved a bit to the side, zoomed in a little bit, and I tried to work the uh, framing of Sparty with his shadow in a little bit different manner. I still wasn't getting what I wanted, even though I was changing vantage points and changing framing, so I decided to change lenses, which would, of course, change my framing and vantage point aspects as well. And I switched to a very dramatic 15 millimeter fisheye lens to widen the frame, and I also used a lower vantage point. I crouched down a little bit more. I came back to the center, trying to work with that symmetrical composition idea, and I noticed uh, as I was looking at this scene, all of a sudden the pattern of shadows on the left side became very important. I didn't know why, but I thought, let's go experiment and, and see what I see there. So I wandered over, and lo and behold, there's me. And I said, well, hello me. Uh, that's quite interesting. Uh, I came here to photograph Sparty, but now I'm seeing you. Maybe that's what I came here for, and I just didn't know it. Again, Jay Mizell, another really great piece of advice he gave me. He said, whenever you think you're really into something and it's really working well for you in front of you, look behind you. Moving a little bit further away, this was not a zoom lens, so I had to kind of move back a little bit moving forward, moving in and out, I finally made the picture that for me sums up some of the essence of that idea of the frame, negative space, what's chopped off, what's included, the vantage point, and the effect of the place that you stand when you make a picture. Now we'll take a look at a couple of other photographs in relationship to framing and vantage point. This group of photographs was taken on a locomotive ride from Trinidad, Cuba to a former center of sugarcane production. All the shots were taken from the locomotive, so the shutter speed had to be high enough to avoid motion blur, and it was a cloudy, rainy day. I was able to hang off either side of the cab and even shot some within the engine cab. Couldn't find the angle or the image I wanted in the distance. Finally, in this shot, you see the one that I chose. I saw an elevated bridge coming a few hundred yards in the distance and shifted to the left of the cab and waited to get the shot, which had the view of the mountains that I wanted. I only had time for one shot, and fortunately for me, it turned out the way I wanted, and I got what I wanted. The next shot also was in the former Sugar Cane Center near Trinidad, Cuba, and was shot from the top of a very high tower near a village. I had to climb several series of wooden ladders to go from floor to floor. After reaching the top, I was confronted with several portals and the dilemma of which shot might be the most distinctive. I tried various angles on each of the portals and a number of shots taken a distance from the portals. You see examples of those in the panel that's on display. And finally, I backed up to the opposite wall to try and get an overview. None of them really satisfied me. Finally, I chose a portal facing the main road in the village and noticed that it had graffiti in the foreground with the name Sabrina. I decided that this was the frame that I wanted, and I also noted 
that in a way this was a kind of frame within a frame which suited me even better. And the view within the frame was also what I wanted and this turned out to be the shot that I stuck with. Thank you.